This course on UI design is perfect for anyone who wants to learn more about the field. It will take you from feeling intimidated by a blank screen to confidently creating web app designs. You'll learn about UI patterns, color choices, and typography, and get hands-on experience with design software. By the end of the course, you'll be able to create a consistent design system and know how to solve design problems. It's an exciting opportunity. The Figma design system is a set of elements, styles, and rules that ensure a product looks the same throughout. It makes designing easier and helps designers work together and get feedback from stakeholders. Figma's design system includes shared components, style guides, automatic arrangements, and teamwork tools. With these features, teams can create great designs quickly and easily. ChatGPT is a helpful tool for creating content and titles. It's designed to help you make engaging content that keeps your readers interested. It has many features to make writing easier. You can use ChatGPT to create content for various purposes, such as blog posts, articles, presentations, and social media. You can customize the tool to suit your needs. With ChatGPT, you can make your content more informative and interesting. Often, teams rely on pre-made icon sets and illustrations to speed up the design process. As designers, it's essential to start on the right foot and build on the expertise of others. It's also important to learn how to customize icons and illustrations properly to fit your product. In this course, we'll be using SF Symbols, which is free and included in the course's source files. This course teaches how to create great visuals for your web apps using Midjourney. You'll learn the basics of Midjourney, including its available tools and features. Additionally, you'll discover how to generate effective photos and illustrations that communicate your message to your audience. By the end of the course, you'll be able to create professional quality visuals that will make your web design stand out. Interactive components allow you to quickly create and compare different design options by prototyping interactions among variants in a component set. This helps you identify potential issues or areas for improvement in your design, resulting in a more effective design. In short, interactive components streamline your workflow and create engaging designs. The design tool is a fast way to create prototypes for app flows and interactions. By designing in this tool, you'll have more functionality for your app before you start coding. One of the main benefits of using this tool is the ability to avoid overcomplicating your design file. It's important to know that by using this tool, you'll have a clearer vision of your app's design and functionality, saving you time and effort in the long run. To capture your audience's attention, showcase your app in action with screenshots. Use these for landing pages, app store submissions, presentations, and promotions. High quality, visually appealing screenshots can convert potential users. This section covers UI patterns and wireframing for creating designs. It includes tips for finding inspiration, following iOS design guidelines, and using established UI patterns. The document also provides step-by-step -step instructions for creating a web app wireframe using Figma, including creating frames for different elements, adding buttons and menus, and creating cards. If you're looking for UI inspiration, you might want to explore Behance and Dribbble. These websites showcase designs from top designers around the world. You can also find design patterns and wireframe templates on sites such as UI8 and Figma Community, which can help you save time and get started quickly. To create an iOS app, it's important to follow the design guidelines provided by Apple. These guidelines cover everything from color and typography to layout and interaction design. Adhering to these guidelines will help ensure that your app looks and feels like a native iOS app and provides a consistent user experience. To begin this course, it's essential to start with my Figma file. Create a new page from the left menu and ensure that the Pages section is expanded. All color styles, gradients, text styles, icons, and components are already created making them useful for the rest of the course. We'll create a web app. It's a program that runs in a web browser so you don't have to download it. Plus it works on any device with a web browser such as desktops, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. To create a new file, open Figma in your web browser and sign into your account or use the desktop app. From my file, you can work on a new page called Practice. Click on the canvas and change the color to 746090. 
Press A to create a new frame, then select the format MacBook Pro 14 on the right panel. Set the background color of the desktop frame to 0C1033. Let's add a layout grid. A layout grid is a helpful tool that aligns elements on a page or screen using horizontal and vertical lines. It creates a balanced and visually appealing design while keeping elements the same size and distance from each other. In the inspector panel, click on the plus icon next to layout grid. Set the grid size to 8 and since we're following the 8 point grid system, we'll make sure that every element has a size that is divisible by 8. Let's add a wireframe. A wireframe is a basic outline of a design that shows its structure and layout without detailed design elements such as colors or images. Let's start with the sidebar. Add a rectangle of 248 by 982 with the fill color 2E335A. Align it as follows. Next, add a search bar of 1264 by 56 with the fill color 454B79. For the segmented control, Duplicate the previous one and fill it with 1D234D. For the main content section, add a rectangle of 1264 by 870 and fill it with 0C1033. Rename the four layers properly to be organized. Let's add the browser controls for Mac. Design the elements inside the side menu frame. Press O to create an ellipse of 12 by 12 and the fill color will be 454B79. Duplicate it two more times. Group the three ellipses and set the spacing to 8. Align the group to 24 from the top and left. You can also set the spacing with a keyboard shortcut. Select the group and press on the Option key. The guides will appear so you can align it with the arrows from your keyboard. Rename the group to Browser Control. Let's design the side menu elements. Add a frame of 248 by 56 and remove the fill. Place it at X0 and Y56. Add a rectangle of 248 by 1 and fill it with 454B79. Drag the rectangle inside the menu frame and the X and Y position will be 0 and 55. Rename it to separator. Press O and draw a circle of 24 by 24. Align element 24 pixels to the left and 16 from the top. Press R and draw a rectangle next to the circle. Set its size to 104 by 16. The X and Y position will be 64 and 20. Set the corner radius value to 20 and rename this frame button. Duplicate the button frame. Place it under with a spacing of 0. Duplicate again 3 times. Figma will automatically align them for you. Duplicate 5 more times and set the spacing to 48 pixels from the first group. Repeat the steps for the third section. Now let's design the elements inside the search bar frame. Add a frame of 442 by 40 with color. Fill 1D234D. Set the corner radius to 40. The X and Y position will be 288 and 8. Add an ellipse of 32 by 32. Align it 16 pixel from the top and 32 from the right. Duplicate it so select the ellipse, press the option key and drag to the left. Set the spacing to 24 and duplicate it one more time. Change the fill color to 1D234D. Now let's design a card inside the main content frame. Create a frame of 376 by 336 and fill it with color 1D234D. Set the corner radius to 12 and rename the frame to card. Inside the card frame, add a frame of 376 by 208 and in fill color 1D234D. Align the frame to the top and rename it to video. Add another frame of 376 by 128 and fill color 2E335A. Align the frame to the bottom and rename it content. Let's add some text elements inside the content frame. Press O and draw a circle of 40 by 40 and color 454B79. Align the element 16 pixels to the left and top. Add a rectangle with same color with a size of 280 by 24. Align the element 16 pixels from the circle and 16 pixels from the top. Add another rectangle of 104 by 16. Align the element 72 pixels from the left and 12 from the top. Select the last rectangle then duplicate it by pressing the option key and dragging under with a spacing of 8. 
in the inspector, set the corner radius value to 20 to all the rectangles. Align the card frame 56 pixels from the left and 32 from the top. Let's create two rows. Select the card frame, duplicate it by pressing the Option key with a spacing of 16. Duplicate the second card, press Command D, and this will automatically set the spacing. Next, select the three cards, then press the Option key while dragging it below with a spacing of 40. That concludes today's section. The next section will cover color and gradient. Learn how to effectively use color in design, including the color wheel, neutral tones, monochromatic colors, and gradients. It also provides resources for creating gradients and instructions for saving and applying colors in Figma. Additionally, use the Stark plugin to verify contrast ratios and provides a tutorial for creating an animated button prototype using Figma. This is the color palette that we're going to use today. It is recommended to start with a bold and bright primary or secondary color that is pastel in nature. Colors should generally only be used to draw attention to important elements or buttons. Perhaps the most important aspect of colors are the neutral tones. These are the neutralizers, and as such these keep your designs from feeling too heavy. Most importantly, the neutral tones are easy on the eye and defer the user's attention to the content. You can use these as backgrounds. Gradients can help your design leave a better impression compared to solid colors. They are mainly used for buttons and backgrounds, but you can also use them for text layers. Let's get started. First, let's copy the previous wireframe and start working on it. Let's go to the browser controller and apply the saved colors to the minimize, maximize, and close buttons. Select the first ellipse and click on the four-point infill section. Choose the red color style. Select the second ellipse and apply yellow color. Then the last ellipse apply the green color. Let's start with the second button frame. To add a second separator, select the separator and then press the option key while dragging it to align it with the top. Make sure to align top. We're going to create a light reflections. Add a linear gradient that uses three white stop colors in horizontal. Take the first color, adjust the opacity to 0%, the second is going to 100%, and then the last is 0%. Now, it's time to name the layer by light reflections. Go to blend mode and choose overlay. Select the light reflection layer, right click and click on copy properties. Select all the separator in the other button frame. Then pass the properties. Go to the fill panel and set linear to 60% opacity. Select the second button frame. We're going to add a background for the button when it's selected or hovered. Go to the fill panel and choose radial gradient. Add two stops to the color gradient. The first color being 8015A7, and the second color is the same with 0% opacity. To change the position, click and drag the circular arrow icon to the top center of the button. To change the size of the gradient, click and drag the scale handle to the top left corner of the button. Select the circle from the second button frame, then change its size to 32 by 32 and click on Align Vertical Center. Go to the Design panel and remove the fill. Click on the plus icon to add stroke. Set the thickness to 1 and align center. Let's use color system. Click on the icon, then choose gradient. We will be incorporating a plugin named Stark, which assists in verifying the contrast ratio between the text and the background. Create a rectangle with the color of the button frame background, with a white color text. Then select the two elements. Right click and click on plugin, select Stark, and click on contrast. You should see green check marks depending on whether you've passed the checks or not. Select the rectangle and set the color to white with 20% opacity. Copy the properties. Select all the circle and the text element. Then paste properties. Now let's work on the search bar. First, let's remove the fill because we won't need it. Select the search bar, then go the fill panel and change to linear. 
Set the first color to 0F55E8. And the second color to 9DDF3. Set to 100% opacity. Set the fill to 10% opacity. To change the angle, move the handle from the top left to the center right. Add a stroke with a white color at 50% opacity, overlay inside and a width of 1. Copy the ellipse gradient from the side menu. Then paste it in the search bar frame. Align it at the right. Press on option to see the spacing. Place it at 4 spacing from the top, right and bottom. Select the last circle and then add the color 22D7FF and then set 100%. Click on the text tool or press on T. Type the letter A in uppercase. Choose the SF Pro with a medium weight. The size is 20 and the color is white. Select the text in the circle. Add them in a group and a name the group by user account. Next, let's work on the segmented control. First, let's remove the fill because we won't need it. I want the same style as the button when it's selected. Select the button frame and copy the properties, then paste it to the cemented control frame. Drag the angle arrow icon until you, you reach the card, then drag the offset arrow icon to the center bottom of the frame. Click and drag the scale handle until it touches the side menu. Set the color, the top color, to 50% opacity. Let's copy the separator from the button. Passed in the segmented control frame. Change the width size to 1264. Align it to the left in the bottom. Select the side menu, go to the fill panel, click on the plus icon. Select linear. First color is 2E335A. And the second color is 1C1B33. Place the color tool in diagonal. Let's continue with the desktop frame. Add linear. Set the first color to 2B2F53. And the second color to 1D1C34. Add a first color stop on the content frame of the card. Color number is 1D1C34. We only need three color stops, so we're going to remove the last color stop. Let's work on the card and style it with a light reflection and gradient. Select the card frame, then remove the fill using the fill panel. Go to the stroke panel and click on plus, then choose linear. Set the color of the first and second item to white. The second color has a 0% opacity. Add a third color stop at the top of the content and set its opacity to 100%. Add an overlay for blending modes by clicking on the droplet icon. Set the thickness to 1 and align to inside. Continue with the content frame. Select the content frame and navigate to the fill panel. Click on the color box and choose linear. Set the color of the first and second item to 48319D. The second color has 0% opacity. Set the fill to 20% opacity. Before proceeding, select the card frame again. Set 70% opacity in the stroke section. Then copy the property of the content frame and pass it to the video frame. For the last result, I want to replace all the card. Copy the card frame. Then select all the other card frame. Right click and click on paste to replace. This is not the result that I want. I forgot to delete the rectangle. I am going to delete it. Now we can see the result that I planned. So we're done with this section. Next we're going to learn about fonts and textiles. Typography is the way of arranging words to make them easy to read and look good. It's important because the fonts you use can change the way your app looks and feels. Different fonts can change the mood or feeling of your app and even affect how users read or use it. 
Figma offers a wide variety of fonts to choose from, including both system fonts and Google fonts. These fonts can be accessed through the font drop-down menu in the Properties panel. Some of the good starting fonts are San Francisco, a sans-serif font designed by Apple for use on its devices and operating systems. Inter is a popular open-source font family and was specifically created to improve readability on screens, making it an ideal choice for digital designs. Roboto is a modern sans-serif font designed by Google for use on Android devices and other Google products. In Figma, text styles are used to define the various properties of text, such as font family, size, weight, color, and more. These text styles can be saved and reused across different designs, making it easier to maintain consistency and coherence throughout your project. Logos are often created using a slightly modified typeface with custom kerning. To ensure the best legibility, they are typically bolded. If you start with text, you can use Convert to Outlines to gain complete control over vector points and editing. A good exercise is to try different typefaces and compare them against each other to pick the one that best fits the theme of your app. I just wanted to let you know that for the font, I went with Playfair Display in black and a size of 30. In case you don't have it already installed in Figma, you can download it in Google Fonts. Let's add the logo at the first button. So press on T to insert the word papaya using Playfair Display in black and a size of 30. Set the spacing between the circle and the text to 16 or set the X position to 64. Set text to align vertically centered. To outline the stroke, select the text and then right click to choose outline stroke. Let's remove the decimal point from the size and position value. Reset the spacing to 16 and align vertically center. You can also set up your own text styles in Figma, even if they are not pre-configured in the file. To create a text style, select the first row, go to the text panel, and click on the style icon and plus icons. Name the style Typography Desktop H160 Bold and click Create Style. I use the forward slash to create a category. It is optional if you want to add more detail to your text style. Repeat the same technique and name the remaining text in order. When you click on the canvas, the text styles will appear in the panel to the right. You can also add text styles by clicking on the plus. First, let's make a copy of the previous exercise. Next, we can continue by adding a side menu button and applying text style. Remove the rectangle. To add text, click on the T in the toolbar and then type home in the button. Use the SF Pro Text font with a semi-bold weight and a font size of 17. Set the color to white. Set the spacing between 16 and vertically aligned center. Select the text Home and press the Option key while dragging it to the second button. Set the spacing and alignment to be consistent. To apply a text style, click on Style icon and select Typography Desktop Medium Text 17 Regular in the text panel. Then to apply a color style, click on Style icon and select Label slash Dark slash Secondary in the Fill panel. Now let's apply this to all the buttons. Select the second button, then press Command plus C to copy. To complete this task, select all remaining buttons and use Command plus V to paste. To add an additional button to the second section, use Option key and drag, then remove the first button from section 3. Set the spacing between sections 2 and 3 to 48. Let's remove all the rectangles. Let's give a name to each button. Shorts subscriptions, papaya music, and so on. I'm going to copy and paste to make it fast. All right, let's add a title for the section. Press the T key and type channel above the library button. Let's apply the text style and select typography desktop small text 13 semibold in the text panel. Then apply the color style and select label dark secondary. To move the text above the design code button, click and hold the option key while dragging it. Rename to Subscriptions, and set the same spacing. Now let's do the card. So let's write the title, select the content frame, and then press the T key and write how to use AI Art Generator on mid-journey. Let's add the text style. Select Typography Desktop Headline Text 17 Bold in the text panel. Let's make the text two lines instead. Set the spacing to 16 from the left and 16 to the top. Let's remove the rectangles. Now add the channel name. For example, Mid Journey Art. Select the text style, 
Typography desktop small text 13 semi bold. Set the top spacing to 16. Then set the color style to secondary. Let's copy the text and move it to the bottom by pressing the Option key while dragging. Change the text to 7K views, 9 months ago. Select the two texts and set the spacing between to 4. Change the text style to Typography Desktop Small Text 13 Regular. Apply these steps to all cards. Select the card frame and press Command plus C to copy. Select the other cards frame and press Command plus V to paste. The last step is to change the text for all the cards. Alright, let's continue with a segmented control section. We are going to add text inside the frame. Press the T key to add a text field, then type all. Set the text style to SF Pro Text with the semi-bold option at size 15. Set the color style to the dark secondary option. Align text to 32 from the left and 12 from the bottom. To duplicate, press Command plus D, then drag to the right. Set the spacing to 48, then change the text to Gaming. Let's repeat and write the text in order, so I'm going to copy-paste to make it fast. Thoughts, music, thrillers, mixes, avatar, film criticism, Korean dramas, characters, and eating. I would like to introduce ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a super helpful tool for creating engaging content. It makes writing easier and offers lots of cool features. You can use it for all sorts of content like blogs, articles, and social media posts. Customize it to your needs and make your content more interesting and informative. When I'm struggling to come up with a title or content for my writing, I turn to ChatGPT for assistance. It's a reliable tool that saves me time and generates creative ideas for my writing. That concludes this section. In the next section, we will explore icons and avatars. In modern design, icons play a vital role in conveying both function and emotion. They are widely used in UI design, branding, and marketing materials to create a consistent user experience and add visual interest. This tutorial covers creating an icon and avatar library, as well as organizing assets for a streamlined workflow. You will receive step-by-step -step instructions for using various icon sets and plugins, such as SF Symbols and Unsplash. Additionally, you will learn how to apply these icons to the sidebar design. Icon sets are a collection of icons that can be used to add visual interest and functionality to your designs in Figma. Icon sets can be used for a variety of purposes, such as creating user interfaces, illustrating concepts, or adding decorative elements to your designs. Here are some of the best icon sets to get started with. SF Symbols 4 is a collection of 3,100 symbols created by Apple, customizable in a Mac app. Material Design Icons is a set of over 4,000 icons designed by Google for material design. Hero Icons is a set of 292 handcrafted SVG icons by the makers of Tailwind CSS. Feather Icons, over 280 icons in different categories, including arrows and social media icons. Font Awesome is a popular icon library with free and paid versions offering various features and benefits. Let's search for icons suitable for video browsers like YouTube. Personally, I prefer using the SF symbol. Download the SF symbols here. To open the application, first ensure that it is installed on your device. To find the burger menu, navigate to the text formatting section. Choose List Bullet, then press Command plus C to copy. First, let's duplicate the previous exercise and then continue with the new copy. To create a frame, first, Select the circle of the logo, and then press Option plus Command plus G. Set the size to 24 by 24. Name it Icon. To ensure that you're using the SF Pro font, you can follow these steps. Select the text box inside the icon frame to insert the SF symbols. Change the text style to Typography Desktop Caption 15 Semi Bold. Paste the SF symbols into the text box. Change the color style to Secondary. Align the symbol to both the horizontal and vertical center. Remove the circle. Now, let's copy the icon frame and replace it with all the other circles. Select the icon frame, then press Command plus C. Now, select all the circles except for the outline and the subscribers section, 
then right click and choose Paste to Replace. Next, let's replace the symbols. Return to the SF Symbols app. Click on the selected symbol, then press Command plus C to copy. Click on the corresponding text field to paste by pressing Command plus V. Align symbol center center. Add the following symbols for subscriptions, papaya music, library, history, your videos, watch later, downloads and show more. Let's continue on the second row with the outline circle. Select the outline, then press Option plus Command plus G to create a frame. The size should be 32 by 32. Name it Icon Selected. Let's copy the icon frame, then select the icon selected frame. Align the icon frame to center horizontally and vertically. Align the icon selected frame 20 to the left. Copy this frame by pressing Command plus C. Next, go to the search bar section. Select the circle with an outline and then right click and choose Paste to Replace. Return to the SF Symbols app to find the following symbols for mic. Copy the icon selected. Replace the symbol with the mic symbol. Align to the center, then to copy, press Command plus C. Afterwards, let's work on the Action Icon section. Select the two circles, then right-click and choose Paste to Replace. To modify the font, go to the Text panel and click on Detach Style Icon. Change the size to 20, regular and align it horizontally and vertically in the center. Go to the Assets panel to find the following symbols for video and notification. Delete the old one, then position and align it horizontally and vertically centered. Let's hide the outline. Now let's talk about avatar. In digital design, an avatar represents a user online and can be a logo, color or image. It can be a personal photo or abstract design, chosen based on the project's purpose and context. Use the Unsplash plugin for avatars. It provides high quality images that save time and improve engagement and user experience. It's easy to use and fits seamlessly with your workflow. First, obtain a copy from the Figma community by clicking on the Try It Out button. Once the plugin is installed, select the frame or object in your design where you want to insert an image from Unsplash. Next, let's work on the Cards section. Select the circle in the content frame. To proceed, right-click and choose the plugin option, then select Unsplash from the list. You can either click the abstract button or enter a relevant keyword in the search field. Select the image desired. Repeat the same procedure for all the circles in this section. You can use the logo provided on the Assets page or Assets panel. To access resources, click the Assets panel in the top left corner of the screen. There, you can find images, videos and icons to enhance your project, making it more interesting and visually appealing. The Assets panel also helps you organize and find your resources easily in the future. Use this useful tool to improve your project. To add the logo to your design, click on it and drag it to the desired location. Please start searching for the logos of Figma, Design Code, Sketch and Spline. Replace the circle with the logo. This section covers the significance of icons and avatars in modern design using a Figma library and incorporating them into designs with plugins. We also touch on adding a logo for visual appeal. In the next section we will explore Midjourney. Midjourney is an AI platform that simplifies the creation of high quality digital content. With its advanced technology, artists, designers and creative professionals can easily bring their ideas to life with stunning images and more. The platform's user-friendly interface and powerful AI algorithms make it quick and easy to create beautiful digital content. Experience the future of content creation with Midjourney. Unlock the potential of the Midjourney bot on Discord by mastering the art of creating custom images through the use of simple text prompts. Navigate to the website and click on the Join the Beta button or go directly to the Midjourney Discord. Log in using your Discord account. On the Midjourney official server, choose a newbie's hash channel from the list displayed on the left sidebar. Connect with the Midjourney bot on Discord using commands. Commands allow you to create images, modify default settings, 
track user information, and carry out other useful actions. To generate a one-of-a-kind image, use the slash imagine command, along with a concise text description referred to as a prompt. Access the slash commands pop-up and select the slash imagine command or type slash imagine prompt. Write a description of the desired image in the or prompt field. Hit the enter or return key to send the message. Generating an image with the Midjourney bot triggers the start of the free trial. During the trial, users can complete about 25 tasks or jobs. Jobs include using the slash imagine command to create images, upscaling images, or generating variations. To monitor your remaining trial time, use the slash info command to check the fast time remaining. After the image grid has been generated, two rows of buttons will be displayed. U1, U2, U3, U4. The U buttons upscale the size of an image, generating an enlarged version of the selected image that includes additional details. V1, V2, V3, V4. By clicking on the V buttons, you can produce minor modifications of the selected grid image. This action generates a fresh image grid that maintains the overall style and composition of the original image. The Reroll button allows you to rerun a job, which in this scenario would generate a new image grid based on the original prompt. Once an image is upscaled, a fresh set of options will surface. Make Variations. This option generates a new grid of four choices by producing a variation of the upscaled image. Beta Light Upscale Redo. This option lets you redo the upscaling process using a different upscaler model. Web. Access the image from your gallery on midjourney.com. You can rate any upscaled image on the Midjourney website or in Discord by clicking on a smiley button. By rating images, you can compete with other users to become one of the top 1,000 image raters each day and receive an hour of free fast mode time. When rating images, you can express your personal style and opinion by evaluating factors such as appearance, effort, colors, concept, or theme. If you love an image, you can show your appreciation by giving it a love. To save an image from the Midjourney account, hover over the image and a window will appear. Click on the three dots, then click on Save Image. The image will be downloaded to your Downloads folder. If you're using a mobile device, long press on the image and tap the download icon located at the top right corner of the screen. Let's create something stunning. We can explore and take inspiration. For example, I like this one. You can analyze the prompts and see what style you like. You can type your own style. For example, full body mermaid portrait, ethereal glacial photorealistic 32K, super sharp details, cinematic intricate details, depth of field, insanely detailed and intricate, soft lighting, beautiful floral filigree accents, underwater fashion editorial photography style, detailed photography. Cinematic Lighting, R2, 3, V4. For more details, you can check their website for the user guide about the version, upscalers, commands, parameters, and advanced prompts. Make sure to read the community guidelines. All right, let's get back to Figma. To apply the image to our file, let's first copy the previous exercise. Then, let's work on a new copy. Select the video frame. Then go to the Fill panel and click on the color box. Select the Image option box instead of Linear. Click on the Choose Image button. To insert an image, select a file from your computer and click the Open button. Set the fill opacity to 100% in the Fill panel. Now repeat the same step for the other video frames. Let's take a closer look at segmented controls. To make the user experience even better when using segmented controls, one idea is to add some more light reflection. Select the segmented control frame, then remove the fill. We won't need it. Then press R to create a rectangle with dimensions 1440x56 inside this frame. Align the horizontal center and bottom. Select the rectangle, then press on Enter key to edit the shape. Now hover over the left edge and you will see a third dot which is in the center. 
Click on the dot and while holding down the shift key, click the left arrow key 10 times. Next, let's perform the same action on the right side. Name it background. Go to the fill panel then select linear. Add the first color to C427FB with 0% opacity. Set the second color to C427FB with 100% opacity. Set the fill to 20% opacity. Now let's add an effects. Go to the effects panel then click on plus. Select the layer blur option and set it to 40. Change position X to 40. Move the background behind the text. Next, let's add a background with an ellipse. Press O to create an ellipse. Navigate to the resizing panel and adjust the width to 1000 and the height to 20. Change the position of X and Y to 132 and 56, respectively. Add color to C427FB with 20% opacity. Add effects, select the layer blur option and set it to 40. Move this layer above the background. Let's add light underneath the text, Mixes. It will be a segmented control that is selected. To add a line, press the L key and drag a line. To make a straight line, hold down the Shift key and click, then drag. Set the width to 200. Position it at the horizontal center and bottom. Name this layer Line 2. Go to the Stroke panel to a linear. Align linear horizontally, then add three colors. Set the first and third color to white with zero opacity. Set the second color to white with 100% opacity. Move line two inches above the ellipse. Add an overlay blending mode. After, let's add a second line. To duplicate line two, select it and then press Command plus D. Change the width to 56. To change linear, go to the Fill panel and click on the box. Set the first and fifth color to 7744 FA with an opacity of 0. Set the second and fourth color to 8E37E6 with an opacity of 100. Set the third color to DCC1F9 with an opacity of 100%. Navigate to the Stroke panel and adjust the thickness to 4. Apply a layer blur effect with a strength of 4. Name it Line Blur. Next step, we will create a ball of light with blur effects. Press the O key to create an ellipse. Set the dimensions to 30 by 30. Align the content horizontally to the center and adjust the Y position by 40. Add color to E6B1FF with 30% opacity. Apply a layer blur effect with a strength of 16. Name it Blur. Move the layer above the line blur layer. Now let's group the light reflection. To group, select line 2, line blur and blur, then press Command plus G. Name it Selected. Align all layers inside this group's horizontal center. Move the selected group under the text Mixes. X position to 448. Move line blur to Y position 58. Set the text Mixes to white. Congratulations! You have successfully completed this design. That's it for today's course. If you want to learn more about this design, we have another section that is only available to 100x supporters on YouTube and our subscribers on the Design Code website. In the next section, you will learn how to organize your design elements using components and how to generate variants of those components quickly. Additionally, you will learn how to make your components interactive and how to create a prototype to test your design. Finally, you will apply these skills to design two pages for a video and channel.